felt like the word of the Lord said. As we begin to sing this bridge, I know breakthrough is coming. I just heard God say that we need to gather together in this room today. I want everyone to find someone, grab hands. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna believe for that breakthrough together. Come on, there is power in unity. I don't care, get out of the sound booth. Come on, I want you to grab hands. We're gonna sing this bridge again from the youngest to the oldest. And I want you to believe for your neighbor next to you as much as you believe for yourself and your family. I saw it clear as day that God said to unite together as one united remnant in this new year of 2023. The devil has tried to separate each and every one of you. And God said, I'm uniting my bride back together. And we are believing for the breakthrough today. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but I just believe that God's not going to let it tarry any longer. Amen. Come on. The Bible says that it will no longer tarry. So I believe that today. Come on, every child, grab hands. Quit playing and grab hands. I feel this so strongly. We're going to sing this again. And I don't care if you got to run around the building. I don't care what you look like, what you do. Don't worry about what your neighbor thinks. But God says, united, the breakthrough will come. United, not divided. United, one united remnant. That was not by mistake that God gave that to our pastor. One united remnant. And I want you to believe for those that have left this church. I want you to have crazy faith. It doesn't matter whether they're with us or whether they're not. Today we believe for the breakthrough. Today we declare over people of Praise the Worship Center that the promise will not tarry any longer. That the breakthrough will come to pass in 2023. Come on, let's sing this. In time, no breakthrough is coming.
God for so long because you're doing the same thing over and over. And I heard the word of the Lord as we begin to declare, I believe it, that your victory is on the other side of you getting out of what you've been stuck in. You want something new? You want your healing? You want your breakthrough? You want your victory? How much are you gonna pursue it? Come on, y'all play something. It's on the other side of your pursuit. It's on the other side of your pursuit. It's on the other side of your pursuit. That's what I hear the word of the Lord saying. There is victory. Something broke open over this house this morning. I feel it. I don't care if we do another song. I'm telling you what I feel. And I needed it just as much as you did. Because we're all in this together. Your journey is no different than mine. And there is victory in this room today. I just feel it like a war chant. What we were doing, we were going into the spiritual realm and making a stance like Miss Paula talked about yesterday. Suit up, child. It's ready. It's time to go. It's time to stand. Having done all to stand, stand again. Having done all to stand, stand again. Doesn't matter what comes your way, stand again. It doesn't matter what you went through. Doesn't matter what you may go through. Once you get your feet planted by the river where living water flows, you may sway like the tree does during a hurricane. But when your feet are planted on a solid foundation, a solid rock, it doesn't matter what storms, what sickness, what, what, whatever comes your way, it doesn't matter. Because you know how to fight the battle. And there is victory in this room today. And it depends on whether you're going to grab it or not. So we're going to go back into this. I believe it. And I don't care if you got to march around this room and pray and shout your way till the walls come crumbling down. But I declare and I release in this atmosphere today that we will not tarry any longer for the breakthrough to come. We will pursue it, actively pursuing it, believing with faith. And as we make our pursuit in the things of God, and as we hold fast and we stand firm and we suit up in the whole armor of God, we will not struggle with the things in 2022 or in 2023 like we did in 2022. Whether they come your way or not, we will withstand the storm because that's what it's about as a child of God. You strengthen your core. You strengthen that core. What is that? That's strengthening your faith. And the one thing that bothered you before won't bother you no more. Hear me. What bothered you before will not bother you anymore when you learn to strengthen the core of who you are as a child of God. You are a daughter, a son, and an heir to the throne. Some of you need a reminder of who you are. So suit up. It's time. Do you hear me? It's time. We're going to sing this I Believe It one more time. And before we go to another song or switch the atmosphere anywhere else, I want you to sing it with every fiber of your being. No matter what it takes. I'll tell you, sometimes I'll get lightheaded up here because of how loud I'll scream. And I don't care. It's not about me. It's about my worship to God and how loud of a song I'm going to give him. And I've learned that the, the, the deeper the battle, the louder my shout. Some of you get quieter in your paddle. But I'm here to tell you, you need to raise your voice louder than you've ever raised it in this room. Give a shout of praise louder than you've ever given a shout of praise in your life. Because your worship is supposed to grow. It's not supposed to dwindle down. Your worship is supposed to become like a shout of victory. Sing my praises to my king. Come on, we're going to. 
death, hell, and the grave. The blood still holds the power of death, hell, and the grave. The blood still holds the power of death, hell, and the grave. The crimson blood. How many of you know that the Lord is in this place? Just stay still for a moment. There's, come on, sis. Jesus. Come on, if you have an interpretation for that word, you need to obey the Lord and give it. How many of you feel the Lord moving in this room? Well, you need to get ready for what God is releasing and he's already doing right now. I don't know if you can feel it. I, I've heard what Janice said. We don't converse and we don't plan stuff and we don't put it together. But one word that she released as I was going out the back just a moment ago, uh, the Lord said, pursue, pursue. And you need to understand, Angie, go ahead and do what I, it, it, they, who's got them? Pass them out. Come on. I need everybody in this room to have one right now. Find you a pen. Find you a, a, some way to write, mark down something. If you need to move to your seat, if you're up here, that's fine. You do what you need to do. But I need everybody in this house to obey the Lord right now at this instruction. How many of you know your blessing hinges on the obedience to your instructions that God sends you? Did anybody hear me? Your obedience determines your blessing when you obey the instructions that God gives you. And as we were worshiping this morning, there are so many things that I want to say to you right now, but I'd be here for a while. I'm simply here to say that everything that God has done to this point in this service, everybody in the North Florida area needs to be a part of it. Would to God that they'd all be in this room, and we had to have the Graceville Civic Center to have them all in there to hear it. But you know what? God has chosen you and I to be here. And so I need you to take that little paper. And I need you to take you a paper and a pen. And I need you to write on that thing. My past 2023 20, to whenever you were born. I need you to write that down there. Whatever date you were born, just the year. And whatever uh, 2022, my past. Now I'm going to obey the Lord here in just a second. And you're going to see this. I don't care what failures you had last year. I don't care what successes you had last year. It's over. Somebody say it's over. It's past. It's done. You need to understand. Whatever went good for you is gone. 
Whatever went bad for you, you hear me now, it's gone. And I've said this before and I'm going to continue to say it. The reason that your windshield in your car looks better than your rear view mirror does is God wants you to look at what's ahead, not what's behind. God is fixing to break some stuff off of some people in this room this morning by the power of the anointing and you are not going to see it the same way after this moment in just a minute. You write whatever else you want to write on there that you want to see God get rid of. Because as of this day, God has said, Mark this day. I wrote on my notes this morning, January the 1st. I don't know if you remember that the beginning of our natural um, a year that we celebrate in America was started this year on a Sabbath holy day that we celebrate church. Hello, somebody. This new year started on a Sabbath day. And what you need to understand here, if I'm a little loud, turn me down. It just sounds loud right here, but that's okay for me. I like hearing me. Hello, somebody, you need to hear this. Last week, right back there in that room, in that corner, God spoke to me and said that, that I am releasing a season of fulfillment on my land and on my people. And I went home last week, and I was flipping through YouTube. I don't know if I already said this. I've said it to several people. My wife and my daughter watch this girl. I think she's a little crazy. Her name is Real Talk Kim. But you know what? God likes crazy. Bump your neighbor and say, you're in there because of that. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But as I was flipping through this YouTube channels to watch, I caught this program that she aired the, the, the New Year's Eve night. Now, keep in mind, she released this before I said it. But as she was watch, as I was watching it, it caught my attention because of the title. It said, Kiss My Boundaries, I've Got Marching Orders. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Come on now, listen to me. Y'all kids, behave just a minute. This is very important what we're doing right now. I need y'all to participate in it if you can. And so I watched it about 15 or 14 minutes into the program. And guess what she starts talking about? On New Year's Eve night, she released to her church or wherever she was. She said that God is going to repay. God is going to recover. And God is going to refill all that has been lost. Well, I don't know if you know it or not. That means fulfillment. And then she went on to say a few moments later, the very word that God gave to me in a song that I talked about Sunday morning, it ain't over till God says it's over. <laughs> you need to quit looking at an empty chair sitting beside you. You need to quit looking at an empty paycheck or an empty checkbook or an empty heart or an empty mind or an empty house. Hello, somebody. Because God said he was going to fulfill it. This is the year of fulfillment. Hello, somebody. Somebody. And it ain't over till God says it's over. America, it's not over till God says it's over. Politicians, it's over when God says it's over. Hello, somebody. And so I watched it just a few more moments longer. And she said, it ain't over till God said it's over. I about come up out of my chair. Angie had just went to bed. I went to hollering, Angie. Come here, come here. She, uh, she, uh, she, the Holy Ghost mother put her to sleep. She didn't come. So I kept on watching for about another few moments. Somewhere around 34 minutes into the video, she said these very words. God is going to, get, to bring fulfillment to this year. I said, that's it. I'm done. But it didn't stop there. A few days later, I was working in the yard. Somebody from a church we used to go to sent me a text, said, hey, you need to watch this when you get a chance. I started to play it this morning for you, but it's about 45 minutes long. Brother Kent Christmas, 
Somebody you know, we watched him last year for New Year's. But he got up to prophesy at a church. I think it was in Louisville, Kentucky, or somewhere like that. He got up and he started preaching about, and he said the same thing. This is the year of God's fulfillment. Honey, I don't know how many confirmations you need, but two was enough for me the other day, and I've been going on it all week long. Now, Jenna gets up here this morning and starts talking about pursuit. Honey, you will never see fulfillment if you don't ever start a pursuit. So here's what the Lord said to do. Jana, where did I put that thing? Jim, excuse me. Go grab that thing from Papa that I brought in here. Everybody got your word on? You wrote it down there in my past? That's all right. Sit it right there. Just sit it right there for me. Everybody got that? Anybody else like me? I'm waiting on me right now. Hello, somebody. 1964 to 2022, my past, my failures, anybody with me, my heartbreaks. Sometimes you're harder on yourself than anybody else. Y'all know that? The Lord just prompted me to say that. My failures, my heartbreaks, my disappointments. Come on, anybody else? Hate, H A, self hate. Okay, I thought you said spell hate. My disappointments, whatever you feel led to put on there. Here's what the Lord said to do. Right there, come here. Who wants to help me? Gunner, you want to help me? Come here, Spud. Reach around there, go by everybody. Go by everybody and let everybody put that in that pan. Hallelujah. Y'all still feel the anointing? I do. Everything that God's been doing in this room, I can't hardly do nothing but cry. The same anointing that I felt the first day that I became the pastor of this church is the same anointing that I feel right now in my spirit. What has happened, people may have come and people may have gone, but Jana just addressed that. How many of you understand? It's how do you see it? Oh, God help me. I was going to preach. If the Lord allows me, I might. If I don't, we're going to do this and we're going to be free. Hello, everybody in this house, I need you to put that in there. But I was going to preach this morning that God began to talk to me about being in the presence of the Lord. Every song that we've sang, we've talked about being in the presence of the Lord. How many of you know it's not that my presence is in this building that makes it important? It's not that your presence is in this building that makes it important. It means when his presence is in, or when we're in his presence, that's when it's important. And in his presence, the Bible says this, in his presence is fullness of joy. There's that word fulfillment again. How many of you understand that? This year, God's already been dealing with me about taking a new direction in this house. My responsibility this year is to make sure you don't go to hell. Hello, somebody. You may hear me repeat stuff over and over and over again. You may be getting sick of hearing what is God. I don't know what God's going to say. But the Lord has given me a new assignment that, that I'm going to be a better shepherd and a better caretaker over the fam, of the family that God has placed us in. And with all God's help, everybody's going to see that become reality. But it's never going to happen if we don't end up in his presence every time we get together. Hello, somebody. So today, we're getting rid of all your hang-ups, all your excuses. And you're going to see this. Has anybody not put your stuff? Justin and, okay, we're waiting on them. Joshua, you got yours. Thank you, son. <laughs> you fixing to see it. God, have mercy, you fixing to see it. Matter of fact, while I'm waiting on them, I'll tell you something else that Kit Christmas said that I picked up on. And you've heard me say it in this house time and again. Here you go, Gunner. Go, wait, just go ahead. Get, take that back over there and let when Brother Ron. Just stand there till he's through. Or here, Jim, are you writing? Okay, you through. I see a pen in your hand. Kent Christmas said this. He said, this is the year that you're going to hear people declare not that God's going to do it, but that God did it. Hello, somebody. How I many of you heard me say, I can't stand preachers that say God's about to, and we all do it, we all do it. But how many of you know, I heard him say it the other day. He said, God is going to do it this year. Yeah. You 
fall in line with that where you want to. So here's what the Lord said. Thank you, Lord. I hope we ain't got fire. Do we got fire extinguisher? I ain't got my glasses on, so I can't read all of these. Do what? Can you? I'm trying to get them to burn. They're going to burn. That's all right. You just go ahead. Just keep it, keep it, going. Keep it on until everyone's gone. Now, here's my point. Here's what the Lord said to do, and this is it. What? Are y'all worried? Why would God tell me to do it if he didn't think it would take and do? That's right. We got bottles of water around here. Now, I want, I want anybody in this room. Hold on. I know this is simple. You say, well, Brother Keith, listen, I'm just obeying the Lord. I'm just the donkey that Jesus is riding in on today. Hello? Now, which one of, which one of y'all want to come get your past? Come on, Sarah. You want to come get your past, darling? Then today, don't from this day forward look back, says the Spirit of the Lord, because you're one of the main ones that the Lord, when I hugged your neck a while ago, darling, the Lord said you need to quit living in your past. You need to quit letting that past come back up and haunt you time and time and again. Raise your hands, darling. It was no mistake that you sat by Leslie. It's no mistake because when I saw Leslie stand and sit back with you again, I saw an old friendship rekindled that I saw when I first came to this church. And I'm here to tell you, darling, that God said, and your past is no longer remembered by me so don't let it be remembered by you says the spirit of the Lord you need to realize that God said I don't remember the sin why do you keep focusing on come on is anybody in this house come on somebody anybody Angie come up here and help her Angie come sister Paula y'all come help her I declare deliverance I declare deliverance Sarah I declare deliverance church people of God. I declare deliverance, people of praise. I say, who wants to come get your past? Come on, somebody. Say it ain't over till God says it's over. Let a bow city and let a bow coat of our seat. Yes, see, we won't stop. We won't stop. We won't stop. Set it up, O city and never hurt. Set it up, city and never hurt. We're not going to stop. We won't stop. We won't stop. We're not going to stop. If you know, the enemy's been defeated and death couldn't stop. Come on, same chord. Ripped our hands, victory. We're gonna make a choice. Oh, come on, say, the enemy's been defeated and death couldn't stop. We're gonna lift our Sarah, healing for Eric, healing for Haley. Unite this family in the name of Jesus. Unite this family in the love of the Holy Ghost. Unite this family in peace and joy. Unite this family. The past is over, Sarah. The enemy's been
Just a minute. Just keep playing softly. We say, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over every heart, mind, soul, and body in this room right now. Father, we declare that this is our new birthday. This is people of praise. New birthday. So, Lord, when we look around behind us, we see nothing like you see the blood. Come on, Jesus. Y'all hear me? Wait, softly, softly. Did you hear what I just said? When you look around from this day forward, you see nothing because God sees the blood. I plead the blood over your past. It's gone. I plead the past over your bad decision, all the things, everything you could think of. You wrote it down. It's gone. So now when pop people talk about who you were yesterday, you're like, I just born today. I don't know what you're talking about. Because you don't have to revisit the past when God said you've been delivered from it. Anybody, there's nobody in their right mind, if you would even try, even though there's fragments of our past laying right here, don't miss this. There are fragments of our past here. You can't find it. You can't see it. So why you want to go out of this house and listen to the lies of the one that hates you and wants your soul to burn in hell forever? Why do you want to even take thought of one thing that you used to do? Sister Janet, raise your hands. Angie, go over there. Sister Paula, help me. Anybody else wants to help me? Now, I read on Facebook the other day, you said something about a new you. But the Lord just spoke to me a few minutes ago when I laid this mic down, and the Lord said, you don't realize how new you are. Fixing, wait, wait. You don't realize how new you are fixing to be. Listen to me, darling. It's no mistake you said I can't play the bass. It's no mistake you said I don't have time. You say that because God's fixing to fill up your time schedule, darling. Now listen to me. Wait, listen to me. The Lord just spoke this to me. You came in here this, this morning and you told me you had to pray, uh, that I need to pray for your eyes to be shut. But the Lord said, I'm opening your eyes. The Lord said, I'm giving you new eyes to see. I'm giving you a new realm of the Spirit to see into. Why do you think, the Lord said, that the devil has been attacking your body so much when the gift of healing has been put on your life? The devil's trying to make a mockery out of you, and you bought into that some a little bit, but the devil is a liar, and you've been, dis you've been uh, separated. You've been cut free by the blood of Jesus, darling, and I say that the gift of God that is on the inside of you is going to manifest in multitude increase this year like you've never seen. Receive it now in the name of the Lord.
new season of ministry and the anointing. The Lord just spoke my heart. We've talked about it, about fulfilling the role that mom left. I was going to preach this morning about Elijah passing the mantle down. Listen to me now. This is my sermon. I'm just going to give you the note. There were four times in the Bible that Elijah tried to get Elisha to stay still. He said, the Lord has sent me from Gilgal to Bethel. The Lord has sent me from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. And every one of those places, sis, Elijah says, as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. And it's because of that mentality to hold on, he received the mantle that was cast down. And the Lord said to tell you, sis, the devil fears you because he knows the power that resides on the inside of you. Listen to me. You've allowed that to lay dormant. God said, I'm reviving the fire in your spirit. That that I have done in you the last two services in this room, God said, is a drop in the bucket for what I have in store for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. The touch that you've experienced over the last two services in this building, God said it's going to abide and begin to manifest, and it's going to change the atmosphere of your house. It's going to change the atmosphere in your connections with your family because there is a level of the anointing that God is raising you up to that you've been falling short of, but God said, I I can do all things through you, says the Spirit of the Lord. You need to hear me, sis. Yes, God is awesome. I only speak what the Lord says in the name of Jesus. Here's what the Lord says. Take your rightful place. Not something that somebody gave you something that God afforded you. Your rightful place, your birthright, you said it. You know what I'm talking about, then. You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh -huh. Y'all hear that? Well, all I got to say is happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Man, y'all need to understand this. I started praying for this last, well, before the year ended. I said, God, I'm tired of just, we need some, we need some, we need some presence. We need some presence in the house today. I agree, sis. I feel he is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. The song says, I will bless his name again. He is here. And where he is, there is liberty. Come on. Don't tell me God's here and then everybody stays bound up. That don't work that way. That's not scriptural. Sister Paul, I don't understand what I'm seeing right now, but over your fireplace, I see a war in the heavenlies taking place. It's almost like I can see, it's really weird right now in my spirit. I see like fire colored skeletons of the good and the battle clashing right around the area of your fireplace. And I hear the Lord say these words that place is holy. Where that fireplace is in that, in that room there, I don't know if that's where you're having the ladies or if you've got another room, but I hear the Lord say that that place is holy and there are demonic forces trying to dissolve and try to destroy what God has started in that place. And God said they will not win. I, I'm tell, I can see it. It's like, I, all I can tell you is skeletons with swords and, 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 and uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, shields. That's what I'm looking for. And it just is just a glowing, fiery uh, skill. And they're fighting and they're clashing right there in that area. And the Lord said, there's coming a subsiding. There's coming a victory. And God said, it's going to be. The devil will not win. I don't know what all that applies to, but I hear the Lord say, your house is blessed. Your family's blessed. Your job is blessed. Your future's blessed. God has made a way. And your house is not empty by no means, says the Lord. Jesus. Somebody say, the Lord is so very good. It's that color. As I just I flipped that thong, and that's what I see. Skeletons, that color. I still see it right now. But the Lord said he's winning. You win. The enemy's been defeated. The enemy's been defeated in the name of Jesus. Whew, I'm having a good time. How about y'all? See if you can find your past. No, I mean, just see. Look, what do you see? That's right, ashes. What do you see? What do you see? There's one crowd that had to be you, right? What do you see? What do you see, Brother Richard? No past. If you can't read it, I can't read it, we can't read it. Nobody can. Jesus said it's under the blood, Sarah. Then why do we remember it? Why do we remember it? Because the accuser of the brethren, the adversary of your soul, wants you to remember it. You know why? Because if he can get you remembered it, he can get you to give up your divinely birth, your rightly divided, uh, rightly appointed birthright. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Quit being a doormat, doormat for the enemy to walk over your. It's your day, darling. It's your day. You say, well, Lord, I, Lord, I, Lord. No, no, no. If you start that, you're looking back. Don't look back. Lot's wife looked back and it cost her her life. You can't look back. You got to say, I don't know who you're talking about. You go home and you tell Eric, look, that girl you was with yesterday, she don't live here no more. She don't exist. That's a good word. Listen, when I bent down to speak to you a while ago about Eric, the Lord began to deal with me about you and your friendship. Now look, she's had some struggles. You've had some struggles. Y'all have had some struggles together against each other. But look at you right now. God has put somebody with you that really does care for you and listen to her and needs you. It's no accident that God put this together. Oh, y'all just said together. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And I'm going to tell you something. As soon as God starts fulfilling everything that's on the inside of you, you know, you know, you know, I don't have to tell you this. I'm just, I'm obeying the Lord. You, you, you take three or four steps forward and then you, come on now. And you do this, and you do that. You know what God's trying to do? He's sitting there, and he's going, come on, baby. Come on, you, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. But you do sometime like my dumb hunting dogs. I'm going to do my own thing. And the Lord's saying, come on, baby. He's not giving up on you. I can't, I'm just telling you. And listen, it don't matter, listen, it don't matter what nobody else says. Jana started singing a song a while ago and there was a word in it about the prison doors. You know every prisoner where you work. If them doors go open, they are not going to hang out and go, I like it here. Are they? They're going to walk out because they want freedom. Today, the Lord said, I've given you that freedom. Now take it. 
not going back. I'm moving ahead. What's that song? I'm not moving back. I'm moving ahead. I'm to here to declare to you the past is over. It's your day, sweetheart. It's your day. Rise up. She's rose up. She's fell. She's rose up. She's fell. I've rose up. I've fell. There ain't a one in this room that ain't done the same. If they tell you they did, they lied to you right in the house of God, and that's a lie. But you know what? The Bible said if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is faithful and he's just. You know what faithful means? He's going to keep going. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. But my shoulder hurts. But come on, Sarah. Is the Lord dealing with you yet? Is the Lord dealing with you yet? Of course he is. He's healing you from the inside out. Well, I'm having a good time. As the Lord liveth, Elisha, Elisha said, as the Lord lives, I will not leave thee. There's a song that says, I'm going all the way. I think I quoted it last week. The, the hymn of the church says, Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Then the other hymn says, Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have. I've already come then. I'll tell you this funny thing just to kind of lighten the mood here real quick. I was reading this thing on Facebook. I tried to find it. The preacher asked this old farmer to say, say grace at the dinner table. One day he was visiting to eat. And the old farmer in his little overhaul, 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 overhaul bibs, he said, he began to pray. All eyes were closed. Every head was bowed. And the farmer said, Lord, you know I hate buttermilk. The preacher raised his eyes. He said, wonder what's going on now. And he said, Lord, you know I hate Lord. Preacher's got his eyes open and some of the people were too now. And he said, Lord, you know I can't stand that flower that my wife uses. And everybody else, did y'all see the same post? I thought it was cool. I wished I could have got it. He said, but Lord, <clears throat> the preacher's sitting there going, now Lord, I don't know where he's going with this, but you need to wrap this up. We got to eat. He said, but Lord... He said, when you mix them all together, I sure do like them buttermilk biscuits. And the point is, you got to stand the mix. How many of you like what you've been at times? You said, no, I didn't do it right. You say, well, it, you know, I, I didn't make the best decisions. I didn't make the best choice. I didn't act the right way. Amen. Just for the record, so y'all know, I had to repent to the dog the other day. So my wife told me the other day, she said, you ought to write a sermon book about dogs because I have, it's just my thing. Well, Jesus had fig trees, right? He cursed the fig tree, I cursed the dog. But anyway, but I had to repent the other day. But here's the thing. His love is never ending. And I want to say this, it's, it's, all, it's almost, you know, we're going to let you go because I want to say what I got to say till we all get ready to hear it because I've already how many of you say I'm already blessed I've already had my birthday gift amen but I want you to understand this the scripture was Elijah said in 2 Kings chapter 6 where is the Lord God of Elijah the same God the same one that he'd been connected with the same anointing the same miracles that he saw he said, I want a double portion. You know what he said? He said, if you see me when I go. Y'all know the scripture? Y'all heard the story, right? You've been in church any length of time? He said, if you see me when I go. Well, that's kind of not real hard to do, right? Hey, uh, Braden, come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. We're going to walk right over there. Just walk. Just look. We're talking. We're having a good time, right? Look at me when I talk to you, buddy. I'm just going <laughs> to. We're just having a good time, right? We talking, and you say to me, Brother Keith, I want a double portion of anointing of what the Lord's put on your life. And I look at you, I said, well, man, that thing you've asked for is a hard thing. 
But if you see me when I go, then it'll be given unto you. So then we start walking again. And we talk and we having a good time. We having a good time. Look at me when I talk to you, man. There you go. I like your face, you know. The side of your ear is good, but the face is really better. So we're just talking. We're having a good time. And all of a sudden, shoo, there's a chariot of fire that comes between us. Did that get you? Would that get your attention? Hello? A chariot of fire. Now we're looking across the, the chariot of fire, but we're still seeing each other. And all of a sudden, Elijah gets taken up in the chariot of fire. What you going to be looking at? The dirt? You going to be looking for coyotes running around behind you? You're going to be looking at that chariot of fire, ain't you? Unless you just seen too many of them in your life. And he says, as he's taken away, he says, my master, my master. And all of a sudden, that anointing falls down. Raise your hands. All of a sudden, the anointing of heaven is going to fall on you, sir. Come here, mama. Stand right there behind him. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's no accident that you and I are friends. It's no accident. Come here, Justin. It's no accident that we are connected. Come on, Brother Richard. Come help me, brother. I did, just because I didn't call you don't mean it's no accident. Listen to me, buddy. Some of the things you've seen in your lifetime have been not the best. Some of the things you've had to experience is not the best. But God said the anointing of heaven is falling on you, son. God is dealing with your heart, your mind, and your spirit right now. It was no accident that I called you out to walk with me just now. It was obedience to the Lord God Almighty. Now listen to me. I know you want to be like everybody else, and I know you want to do like everybody else, and we all understand that fine. But you need to realize that when God marks you, and when God puts his heavenly tattoo, if you will, on you, you can never be the same, sir. And it's, that's the reason you're different in a lot of people's eyes is because God made you different to be different because he needs somebody in the next generation to rise up and say, God, if they don't, I will. He needs somebody in the next generation to say, God, I may not do everything just right, but I want to be right by you and I want you to help me to do everything that I need to do for your kingdom. So I declare the Lord of the, of the Lord speak to you right now, son. And I declare that everything that's been gone on in your past is gone. When we put the, the, the names in and burn them up, it's over, man. You can't look back anymore. I hear the Lord say that you need to not look back anymore. Today's a new day. It's a fresh day. You get to start over for free. You get a do-over. Just like playing your video games and you crash or you, you burn, burn out or whatever, then you do over. God said this time it's a do-over that's going to stick. In the name of Jesus, I declare the blessings of the Lord be upon you, sir. You, be, you grow up and be a young man and enjoy your, your generation, but realize that God has called you and God has put his hand upon you and God is moving you forward this day, says the Spirit of the Lord, and I love you. And I'm here for you. In the name of the Lord, I am here for you. How sweet it is you to need be somebody, loved you get a hold of me. You get Mama's phone and you call me. If I can't get there, Justin will get right there faster and I'll be right behind you. You will never be alone. You hear me? You are never alone. Matter of fact, the Lord said you felt that way a lot of times, hadn't you? Come on, talk to me. Haven't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, I thought so. But the Lord never, not wrong, never wrong, never wrong. So the Lord said you don't have to realize about being alone because you're not alone. Because not only are Justin and I with you, Holy Spirit is with you always. Say this with me. Say, Father God, just help me to do what I need to do. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me the man, the man. Did you hear me? The man, not the young boy. You're not inadequate. You're not short or, or, or without. You are fully equipped. Did you hear me, buddy? You are fully equipped. Help me to be the man. Say it again. Help me to be the man that you want me to be. Help me to love my mama. Help me to love my family. Help me to be the man. So that one day, when you give me a family, I'll know what to do. Lead me and help me in Jesus' name.
Gus. Where'd he go? Come here. Well, how many of you say I'm still obeying the Lord? How about you? <laughs> you need to understand this. Just hug him. That's all I want you to just stand there with him and hug him. Y'all need to understand this. The devil don't want you, me, or this church to succeed. But I've got good news. He's a liar, he's a loser, and he's a lunatic. Amen. Somebody just look at the devil and say, you're just crazy, that's all. Amen. He is not worth your time. Whew. Somebody just take a deep breath with me and say, whoo, it's been good today. Amen. Elijah wouldn't, I mean, Elisha wouldn't stop. Janet talked about pursuit. We talked about the presence. How many of you know he had to be in the presence to receive the blessing? How many of y'all been in the presence of the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Say the, say this. The enemy's been defeated. Get the right key. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice. say something real quick and I got something else to do um, it, you know if you walk out on this man gee I don't know what to tell you but as long as the Lord's moving I'm going to stay <laughs> you remember the story in the Bible I've related it many times I think that there were two sisters Mary and Martha Jesus comes by their way Martha goes to the kitchen and starts getting things ready to eat physically Mary sits at his feet and Martha yells from the kitchen, hey, Jesus, send that girl in here to help me. And Jesus said what? Leave her alone. She's desired the better part. 
And I heard a preacher's wife say this to me, and I've never forgot it. She said, there ain't very many people wanting to be at Jesus' feet, but there's a lot of people won't be in the kitchen preparing natural stuff. So the other day, Monday, last week, you can sit down if you want to. I'm about done. I feel I got one less thing to do. <laughs> well, I got one more thing that I know that I need to do, and then after that, we'll see. Monday night, we go out to eat, and we went over to see my parents, and we come back home. It was about 11, 11.30. I don't know which one it was. It was close to midnight. And Like all of y'all, we've had fun these last few days since the cold came. And so we get home. Angie goes in the, in the utility room to get her stuff ready for uh, work the next day. She had to go back to work. She's hollering, Keith, come here, come here, come here. I'm like, oh, God, what happened? So I get up and go in there. And I walk. We have a, an old garage that when my mom and dad's house, they closed it in, made it a little living room, whatnot. Half of the living room is covered in water. And so we open the utility room door, and the water heater is shooting water up to the ceiling. And it had wet a press board shelf. Don't ever build anything out of press board if you want it to get wet. It ain't going to last. It's like mud crumbled. So the water shot up. And I didn't build the shelf, by the way, anyway. It was there when I came into the world. So the water shot up. Shelf fell. Fell over on the heater. It's a gas heater, which was a concern of mine. And so we got all this mess. Water's all in the utility room. So it's, a, it's almost midnight. We're, we're mopping up water Monday night, Tuesday, whatever. I walked in there, back in the back to get some old dirty towels to throw down and try to clean up. This song that I was playing a while ago when we came in just shot up in my heart. Now, I don't know if you've heard it before. Hold on, do that, because you'll mess up my singing. <laughs> Unless you can play it. It's a simple song that says, He's already provided. He's already provided. Everything you need, He's already provided. Every promise you can claim. Just ask it in his name. Everything you need, he's already provided. And I just kept singing that over and over. And there was a peace that settled in on my spirit. And I sang that song for days. Two days we were without water. Hello? Sweaty, stinky, dirty, nasty. We finally, my son let us go wash in his outhouse. No, not kid, in his bathroom, in his shower, which was very nice, by the way. Joshua's got a nice bathroom. But anyway, uh, just put a plug in there for you, son, in case anybody ever comes by there, they may need to use your bathroom. So anyway, uh, but uh, we, we, we sat there in the middle of that two days. I didn't fall apart. And this is where we got to get to in the church this season and this hour. You got to quit falling apart by everything that comes your way. Some of those things that come your way are there to tell you how strong your faith is. You know, you don't get muscles if you don't go work out. You, you got to go lift weights rather than look at weights. It's like somebody said, Brother Keith, you need to go to the gym. I said, I go by it every day. But that don't work. So sometimes, remember Job? Remember Job? Hello, Job. I got that from Real Talk Kim. Hello, Job. <laughs> Watching that. But how many of you understand you felt like Job? Lord, this has gone wrong. This has gone wrong. Matter of fact, the other day, I'm going to tell on Ron. He ain't listening to me anyway. So uh, the other day, Ron, I called him, check on me. He said, yeah, I had water bust in my house. And he said, I fixed that. And then he said, Gina had water bust in her house. Gina had water bust in her shop. 
And then he said, then I went home and I had another water bus. And that was when I was trying to get the water restored back out here because we couldn't have Christmas. I said, you want to come help me fix the water at the church? He said, I'm not a plumber. I said, it sounds like it to me. You done done four jobs. But he couldn't come. I'm just throwing off on that. But he had stuff. You know, he had to go to work. He had that four-letter word thing he had to do. But still. But, you know, here's the thing with it. Everything that happens is not just so you can fall apart. Things that happen are so you can grow together and rise up. And in the story that I wanted to preach about, Elijah all the, Elisha followed Elijah all the way. And when the mantle fell, he said, hold on. I ain't got the mantle yet. He cries out for the mantle. Then he grabs the mantle. And you know what he does? A very important thing. He, the Bible said he took the mantle and he folded it and he struck the Jordan River. The very thing that he and Elijah had just come across, he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? I said it a minute ago. And the Bible said he struck the water with the mantle of Elijah and the waters parted and he walked back across by himself. Come on, don't miss this now. I'll start preaching right here. He walked back across by himself what he had to have help to get across a while ago. That's a good nugget for you right there. Hello, somebody said, well, I got to have friend, sister, so-and-so, brother, such and such to make it through. Maybe so for now. But there's coming a day that the enemy's going to attack you and said, I got this. Where is the God that I've been serving? And wham, and the Spirit of God is going to move mightily for you. And you're going to walk back by yourself with what you had helped to walk over. I'm prophesying to you right now. You're going to walk back over by yourself what you had helped to walk over last year. Mm, that'll preach right there. That's worth your trip right down the road here today. Y'all remember when, when uh, Peter walked on the water? I told you this before. And he got his eyes off and he started sinking. How many of you know, I always, I've often thought of it. Come here, Jace. Come here. You don't want me doing what you're doing anyway. Lay down. Let me get this hand so I can get, well, actually I need this hand. Turn around the other way. Put your head this way. <clears throat> I don't want you to get a rug burn. Give me a hand. How many of y'all think that Jesus did Peter like this? And I can see Peter going, blub, 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 Come on, stand up. Did, oh, did I? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but I didn't mean to do that. But how many of you know he lifted him up and he walked back with him? Jesus. If you don't quit, Lord, we're going to be here all day. This little man took a hit this week. We ended up in the ER the other day. And I declare that what the devil meant for evil, God is turning around for good over my grandson. He said to me in the woods yesterday, he said, Papa, wouldn't it be nice if we could just pray and, and God tell us everything about everything? And I said, yeah, the devil is a liar. Bless my grandson in the name of Jesus. Whew, man, I feel this thing. So I said all that to say this and do my last thing and you're going to get to go home. If the Lord will leave me, let me be at rest of peace. We need to begin to believe for big stuff again. Angie, bring yourself right here. Ladies, I need you to come with me and help us. We're fixing to pray for something big. You may have something big in your life, but I'm going to pray for my wife, then you're going to help me this morning. Fellas, just stretch your hands this way, ladies, if you want to touch. This thing that has plagued her body since 2017, We've spent numerous dollars that we did not have. Trips to Tampa and Mayo and what was it, Vanderbilt. But the Lord spoke to me a while ago, baby, and he told me, pray. I don't know if you remember this, Angie, but mom said this to me years ago. She said, She's going to win the battle, but you're going to help to win the war. Help her to win the war. That's what my mom spoke prophetically. Jana, get some oil and get a cloth. 
So I'm just going to start this year believing for big things. Is that okay with you? God said he was going to fulfill. We have a steak dinner waiting on us from a lady in Panama City. The moment that she can eat steak, the doctor said she'll never eat steak again. But the doctor don't know the physician I know. So this year I'm going to say, Lord, we're going to start off right now. That's what the Lord spoke to me. The last thing to do that he put on my heart is to believe big. Not that all these other things were not big, but you know what I mean, right? Five years have gone by. The past is over, baby. And I'm going to say it in the name of the Lord. Just put your hands here. Father, the battle's been won. The battle's been rough. Lord, there have been many, many, many nights, too many nights, God, that we've had to get up in the middle of the hour. Folks don't know and don't understand our struggles. We don't know and understand other struggles. But one thing I do know, God, that you said to pray. And Father, we exercise our faith. And God, I declare that you're the God of creative miracles. You can cause muscles that have been cut to be reformed. You can cause eyes that were once blinded now to see. You can cause ears that could not hear to fall in line and hear, God. And I declare that the dumb speak and the lame walk and all declare to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Now, Father God, you said that we would see greater things in the latter days, Lord. We have seen mighty things with her dad and her uncle as we traveled in ministry. But God, it's our season now. It's our time now. It's our family now. It's our one united remnant now. And God, not just for Angie, but for everyone in the sound of my voice that is needing a big miracle. God, you are the God of miracles. We are not in the, the mode of maintaining and trying to survive. God, we are called to thrive, to thrive and to succeed and to come up and to be above. And so God, I speak to this accolade and I curse you by the authority of the word of the manifest power of God. And I say Achalasia, you spirit, loose your hold off of my wife. I say muscles that have been cut be remade again. I say sphincters that used to massage my food down to begin to move again. And I speak life to this esophagus and this stomach area in the name of again. And I say no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And I say God you'll cause her to eat and it'll go down and stay. You'll cause her to take the nourishment in her body and I say God every infection and every disease and everything that the enemy's tried to bring against her body I say God we claim it to be whole and healed and well in the name of the Lord and we say this is the year of fulfillment in the name of Jesus and we release it over my wonderful love, lovely wife in Jesus name amen somebody say God do it to me too do it for me too, Father God, in the name of the Lord. Now Angie's going to stand up here and testify of the goodness of God. Whew, I feel good now. No, I feel real good. I felt good all along, but I feel real good now. <laughs> Amen. Isn't God just awesome? Thank you for being here this morning. Hey, let me tell you a funny. Y'all like a funny? So my wife, she takes good care of me. I don't say it enough, but she does. And so last night we were eating at Jan and Justin's house, and I'm sitting in the chair, and she made my plate and brought it to me. <laughs> and uh, she fixed my, we had uh, barbecue sandwiches and a white T-shirt. No, you don't know that song. Never mind, I'm <laughs> Uh, she had, if you listen to country music, you might know what I just referenced. Justin, you ain't got a clue. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I've been working on Justin. I told him he gets saved when he plays Southern gospel music. But uh, anyway, I had barbecue sandwiches and J Jana made, I mean, Angie made me two. And then we had macaroni and cheese. Jana cooked it and Angie helped, but she made my plate, brought me something to drink. I'm sitting in the recliner and Jace is sitting in the recliner beside me. And so she hands me my plate, and I said, thank you, baby. Jay said, Nana, can you make mine? <laughs> we started laughing at that. 
And he, she said, no, you can get up your little butt and make it yourself. And he said, you don't love me like you love Papa? Or something to that effect. I may not have got the... Yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, he proceeded to say, we actually took the conversation and said, I said, Jace, if you start praying now, you might in your day find a wife that will treat you this day. But if girls continue to go like they're going now, you probably won't. But then Jana said, but in Graceville, you might. So Chip Lee or Graceville. So, so anyway, she said, if you could find a country girl somewhere. So how many of you know, pray for Jace. He's looking for somebody to take food to him. No, he ain't. <laughs> It was hilarious. We laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed because how many of you know? But you know what? To Angie's testimony, how many of you know? The Bible said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And I'm not advocating nothing for y'all single folk. Hey, I'm just telling you, hold out to the, get the right one. Matter of fact, let me tell you all single folks, since I was talking about marriage situations, to all you single folks, let me say this to you. Benny Hinn said this, and I wish I'd have heard it. I've said it many, many years now. If you're running after God and you're single and somebody runs up beside you, introduce yourself. They may be the one because they're running. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. But if that's what you need to do. But no, he said if they run up beside you, they're running hard after God like you. You might want to connect with them. So if you're not running equal, then hey, see, this is I know I'm trying to go. Y'all quit talking. So I'll shut up. But the Bible, you know, we used to say this all the time. You know, we used to say, well, don't be unequally yoked with the unbeliever. And people meant that to mean in the old days different races. That's not scriptural. How many of you understand? Be unequally yoked with the unbeliever means the unbeliever. Hello. So when you're hard running after God, you need everybody that you're connected to to see and feel and be compelled to run just as hard as you are. And if they ain't, then say, Lord bless you, and we'll see you when you catch up. All right, I, buy, I think I'm, I'll go to the store this week and buy you all a bottle of ketchup and give it to you and say, y'all just run after God and tell everybody else to catch up. So. All right, is everybody minds, hearts? Anybody got anything they need to say or do? What, Sarah? Your first what? Oh, your so oh for your shoulder? On your shoulder? On your neck, okay. Well, we're going to do this just like we did for Angie. All the ladies that will come surround Sister Sarah. Your birthday's tomorrow? Oh, your birthday? Well, y'all just having birthdays galore. Is it two for one, two for one special? Huh? So here's the thing. I'm just going to kneel across to you, sir. Father, we just pray right now for our sister. God, you've already done a miracle in her life this morning by sending her in this door. Now I pray, Father, that you would give her the peace that she's needing to have as she goes through this test. Father, I know I've had one, not on my neck, but God, I've had one. And I don't like the MRIs a bit, but God, like the preacher said, I didn't like lard or flour. But God, I pray right now that you would bring peace to Sarah. But God, I also ask that you would heal her body. Father, everything that the enemies try to attack her through the physical part of her body, God, I declare that you would sever the attack and the attachment in the spirit realm. God, I declare that every door that she's opened up or that's been opened up to the enemy to bring in attack against your body, I say, God, we plead the blood of Jesus and the enemy cannot cross the bloodline over Sarah. Now, I plead the blood over Sarah's mind, heart, body, and soul, and I claim victory in the name of Jesus. Bless this sweet of God in the name of Jesus I pray God we build her up and we lift her up and we say God be with her as she goes through the procedure just what I said a while ago God we ask you to go with her as she walks by and then God you help 
thought I was done, but the Lord just spoke me one other simple thing. Sometimes the simple things confound the wise. That's the word of God, is it not? Brother Richard, the Lord said this year is going to be a year of blessing for you just because. Listen to me. There are a lot of people that don't know how to take you. There's a lot of people that don't know how to understand you. Matter of fact, there's some people that just kind of put a mislabel. They, that's the word. Mislabel, you, says the Lord. But the Lord said, because you're my son, the Lord spoke that to me right here just now. Because you're my son, I'm going to pour out blessings on you just because. That's what the Lord said, just because. And there God said, you're going to see a shift in your kids. I don't know what that's about. The Lord said, you're going to see a shift in your kids. I, I don't know where. I just know that God said, you, God, God said that those that have mislabeled you are going to have to redirect and they're going to have to come back and say, my God, because the blessing of God is going to rest on you this year just because the Father loves you, sir, just because he's counted you faithful, just because he's found you worthy. He said, I'm going to bless you because you stand on my word and you receive me at no hesitation, said the Lord. I'm going to bless you just because. The word, Brother Richard, is favor. Just because favor. Just because favor. Just because God's favored you. Drive up in a brand new car. Just because God's favored you. Buy a new tractor. I don't care. Just because God favored you. Do you hear me? Just because. I'm not playing about that. I'm very serious. 
The Lord spoke it to me. I wouldn't say it to you. The only thing I'm going to say, pay your tithes. I'm playing about that. I'm joking about that. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, I felt like I could just whip a devil right there. There was just a, just a uh, rise up on that there. That's a, somebody's going to have to come back and tell you, I'm sorry. Somebody's going to have to come back and tell you. I can't see your eyes. I took my glasses off. Somebody's going to have to come back and tell you, I'm sorry. I just did you wrong. This is your year. Jesus. Well, Lord, help me to be through. <laughs> Somebody say, well, Brother Keith, you got to be through. There ain't many more standing. <laughs> All right. Get your tithes and your offerings ready. Thank you for being faithful. We started off this year, beginning last week, with a great start for our tithes and offerings. And I'm just simply saying, not to you, I've said to the Lord. I'm just letting you in on my prayer. God, we need to do so much more, but we need so much more to do with. And that's not money only. How many of you understand that? I was praying the other day, and I said, Lord, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, they can drive to this little church in Gracefield. Oh, excuse me, Angie, my bad, this big church in Gracefield. <laughs> she got on me so bad that I'm, I'm correcting myself in the Holy Ghost, just helping me right now. So. All right, y'all ready to go home? It's 1230. I feel wonderful. I feel, f I, I'm so fine. I'm, I'm more fine than frog hair split five ways. How many of y'all seen frog hair lately? Are y'all ready for increase? This is the year fulfillment, fulfillment, fulfillment. Do you rent your building or do you own it? Is it for sale? Do you want it? Do you want it? No. Do you want it? Or do you want another one? This is his. I just do what the Lord said. Do you want it or do you want another one? Father, in the name of the Lord, you told me to ask her. I ask her. I put myself out for you, Lord Jesus. You make it happen, God. You make it happen, God. The clientele increase in the name of Jesus. The income increase in the name of Jesus. Father God, you said you would give provision for the vision. Sister Gina has a vision. God, you supply the provision in the name of the Lord. God, you lead her by your spirit. She will listen and hear your voice and obey. God, let her faith arise to the challenge when you present it to her. Don't let your faith waver, Sister Gina. When the Lord prompts it and the timing of the Lord is perfect, you jump, says the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. That, I, I don't think I've ever prophesied something like that ever. In the name of the Lord. All right. Increase. Whew. Somebody just say it with me. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. I need you to just put that on your heart. Fulfillment. And watch what God's going to do. Father, I bless this family. We declare Luke 638, Malachi 310. We declare the provision of a hundredfold and a thousandfold return in the name of Jesus. Father God, as we put you first, as we do it your way, as we obey you, Father God, you said you would destroy the devourer. You would remove the enemy's attack. God, our finances are blessed. Our health is blessed. Our ways to make money are blessed. Father God, our income is blessed. Everything that you do is blessed. You're not a God that is cursed. You're not a God that is under a poverty-stricken mentality. But God, you release your people during this atmosphere that is charged with the power of your Spirit right now to cause your people to believe that there is a supernatural increase that will bring a supernatural fulfillment 
to the families that will grab in faith and stand on the Word of God in the name of Jesus. And we say, Father God, we give you praise. Somebody say, fulfillment and increase. Bring your tithes and your love to the Lord.